everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mighty Miss of a Menagerie, or... Cast. Cast. Uh, tonight we are doing Rhyme of the Frost Maiden for about two hours, followed by about a half hour break, followed by two hours of World of Darkness here on Twitch or on YouTube. They will be posted uh, roughly about the same time if you uh, see both of those videos. Um, also, just a real quick reminder, we have that PvP uh, Battleground coming up on February 19th, uh, and you can register for that on the Facebook group. Uh, there's an event page there that will be linked in the video above, as well as in the description below. Uh, and and as of the releasing of this video, the last day of registration is tomorrow. So if you've waited until this video, oh yes, get at me now. Not if you're watching this live, but if you watch this when it posts. <laughs> um, <laughs> and. I think with those announcements out of the way, thank you all for being here. And we can hop into uh, a little bit of a recap of what happened last time. Um, Helena, with your phenomenal recap skills, would you like a, to take us to through that emotional roller coaster? Yeah, I feel sick. I just really put myself into where I was going to be <laughs> characterized. And now I... <laughs> now I gotta make jokes. Uh, okay. Just pause it. Just pause. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we cleared this big cavern of the Ember Hulk and these Druragar, and we're like, we go back to the throne room, and we're like, "Yo, the way to the Underdark is clear to that Mykonid sovereign," and they was like, "Cool, bye," and they left. So we we're like, damn it, we're really tired. This dungeon is never ending. What do we do? <laughs> and, uh, you know, the general consensus was we got to keep going. We can't be taking a freaking nap on this, even though. We just want to take a nap. A lot hinged, a lot <laughs> hinged on that lost nap. So we're in this cavern again. We're like, okay, there's this gate. We're here in machinery there that way. So let's maybe go that way. It's locked. Oh shit. I kick it. Tempest is like, I'm fucking sick of this kick. I make a lot of noise. I mean, <laughs> I can't believe they didn't hear us already, but yeah, we made noise. They finally heard us. They come running. Quill's like, doodle little thieves tools gets the lock open just in time to see just Qui-Goths getting ready to kill us. We're like, whatever, we killed so many fucking Qui-Goths already, you're out. So we we go in and attack. Unfortunately, we, but then we finally see Zardarok, the cunt in the flesh. <sighs> He's here, so we're like, this is the big boss, yes. And then the machinery that we were hearing ominously through this whole dungeon stops and fucking armor Druragar march on in. And we're like, uh oh, <laughs> this isn't looking good. Tempest goes down, People, somebody else goes down. Then Quill's like, we gotta retreat. And Tempest is like, I ain't going out like this and stays so then everybody comes back in oh that's when she goes down then people start coming back in because oh she didn't do that so then mm -hmm. anyway sorry so we're overwhelmed there's a lot of there's a lot of beat down happening then quill goes down then altus goes down and we're healing people we're doing our best then quill goes down again and Finnick comes in and he's like, here's the fly spell, Tempest. Get him out of here because we're swarmed. So Tempest goes and grabs him and is being held aloft, waiting for a spot to open so she can land down. And then Finnick goes down. So we fall. And that damage truly kills my brother Tim Quill. I almost said my own name. Oh my God. <laughs> I wish it had been me. <laughs> okay, so Phoenix down and Quill is dead. 
and Altus and Z are scrapping. One of them went down, I think Altus, and then Z healed him and he comes back up and, and Tempest is like, I am out of here. And she grabs Quill's body and she runs straight for the Underdark because she's going to go beg that Mike and its Sovereign for some help. Finally, Z and Altus take down the last Druragar. Mm only to see that Zardarok has fled like a little pussy. <laughs> Love it. That's where we are, dear people. That's where we are. All right. Uh, so to start here, we are going to begin with Z and Altus and Finnick uh, in the rubble. Uh, the scrapping that you saw in the distance and heard has subsided, and the chamber appears to be entirely empty, not a single Duragar in sight. All you can hear now is the boiling of the furnace, the bubbling of the lava fountains as they flow through their trough. Other than that, it's deadly silent. <laughs> Um, I'm as soon as the last goes down, I'm going to run over to Finnick. Um, God, I can't remember if I have healing potions left. I don't think I do. Do you have any spells? Oh, uh, not much. I'm exhausted. I, I have, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Whatever you got. I've as I drop down to Phoenix body, I'm just gonna um, reach a hand up and slam it down onto his chest and cast Cure Wounds. Um, and I'm gonna say every prayer to Tear that I know, just as fast as I can. Try to try to cure Phoenix. Try to do something. As you cast Cure Wounds, seeing that energy through the light of your faith spreading through his chest, it dissipates into the air with no effect. Finnick is you do beyond it? healing. Uh, Why isn't he up? Z, I... Uh... Yeah. It didn't work. And then I'm just going to like curl over and lay my head on his chest and do my best not to sob in front of Z. Oh, uh, Z's like throwing fireballs at body or throwing fireballs at bodies. Because he's dwarf bodies. They each rattle and turn as you see the bolts hit and the breastplate shift and the chain but it doesn't bring your friend back where did tempest go do we know oh god where where did tempest go uh she she ran out with with tranquil uh do you think she went oh of Z? Did she run into the Underdark? I hope not, because I don't know what's waiting down there. But probably. As you um, begin to try and find out where she's gone, to the north of you, there is a loud banging as if some sort of large creature is trying to beat down a piece of metal. It's rhythmic and unstopping. Um, I think we need to find her now. Uh, agree, agreed. Agreed. Um, can I attempt... <laughs> to use message to see if I can reach reach her. Yeah. Remind um, me the total range on that. 
120 feet and it says you point a finger towards a creature so i think that she went this direction but i don't quite know so i'm just kind of hoping that it hits her but i don't know if she's within range or not um i'm gonna say where are you okay um sh there's no response there's no indication that it pinged on anything. Oh, crap. All right, Altus, moment of truth, what are we doing? What is, what's that banging sound? Do you, do you have anyone over there? Underneath the banging, you begin to hear deep, muffled cries as if there's somebody yelling. They're harder to hear than the banging itself, but it becomes more prevalent as they get louder. Um, okay, let's... Uh, oh God, I'm gonna regret this. I'm gonna go here. What do I see? Like, uh, we'll go here what's here and as you approach this darkened hallway we are going to cut to tempest tempest the entirety of this time you've been running as fast as your tired body would allow you dragging the extra weight of your lifeless brother behind you at the end of where we left you you'd started to see traces of spores from the still injured sovereign and following those trails. It takes you not too long to catch up with them. They're moving very slow in their current state, not that they were ever quick to begin with, but after about 15 minutes panting, you come across them as they've stopped to rest. I go up to Pleroda and I lay Quill's body in front of him, them. I kneel down, prostate. <clears throat> he's, he's gone. Can you, can you help? Can you bring him back? Please. Pleroda gives you an expressionless look, but from your connection before, you begin to feel that sorrow in the back of your mind as you're connected to their emotional state. Florida lays a hand on Tranquil's chest. The spores from his hand spread across and he looks back at you. I'm so sorry, child. I can bring him back, but he would not be the same. No! And I scream cry into his chest for a little bit. <laughs> Pluto rests their hand on your back. A feeling of warmth and appreciation. It should have been me, brother. I have no use for this world without you. It should have been me. Perhaps you have no use for this world, but perhaps this world has a use for you. It takes everything from you. It takes everything, this, this horrible world. <sighs> Thank you. And I wrap Quill up again and head back out. <laughs> oh, God. The Sovereign rests a hand on your shoulder that feeling of warmth staying with you back through the cavern. 
as he bids you farewell. You are welcome anytime. The clanging Z is louder and louder as you approach, as if it's growing in urgency, and the, the deep calls are becoming more and more intelligible. Um, as you reach the mouth of what is very clearly now a uh, prison, the start corridor has narrow iron doors along the north wall and two similar doors at each end, iron crossbar sealing each of them. The loud banging is coming from one of the cells. The bar on its door is trembling as the brackets threaten to become loose. Now that you're close enough, you hear noises in more than one cell. It appears that this one has just drowned out the rest of what's happening. Molly, Hugo, for the first time in the weeks that you've been here, you've heard speaking, not in Duragar, not in Undercommon, not in Dwarvish, but in a more human register and common. The voice screams, let me out! Uh, which one was that? Here. Um, I'm gonna go... Would I have heard the screaming from around the corner? Um, I think from where you are, it's still this unintelligible sound, but you can definitely hear that it's a humanoid voice making it. I would have called back, hey, Altus, there's people in here. Um, I'm gonna get up from Finnick's side. Does is before I go over there? Is Finnick wearing any? Did he have any jewelry on or anything? A necklace or anything like that of sorts? I don't remember specifically his, enough. His spell book. The spell book. Uh, that's like the most precious thing to him. I was say once. Uh, once we figure out these people, I was gonna go back and check the bodies and see what we can. Uh, I'm just gonna yes. take Finnick's spell book and lay it on him and put his hands over it and hopefully give him some peace. Uh, and then I'm gonna head over to Z as soon as I can find the right window. Um, Molly, Hugo, do you have any reaction to this sound of voices coming closer? Uh, uh, Mal, uh, Malai will uh, just cower in a corner, kind of like putting his hand over, just like, it's going again. <laughs> um, hearing the other conversations, other than the screaming we've been hearing for what feels like years, I'll say, Aha, see, small one, uh, I told you someone else would come. Uh, here, here, uh, uh, people. Altus, you hear that as you're about to round the quarter. I'm going to stop dead in my tracks and kind of uh, look around. Can I see into the cells? Is there it... are um, small windows, about yay big, uh, with slim bars where you could um, look in. Being freshly emotionally hurt, I'm going to use thaumaturgy and make my voice boom and um, yell, who said that? Oh, uh, ah! uh, please, if you keep it down, uh, the small one here is easily frightened. Uh, 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 we're you are to be frightened when somebody yells like that. Well, you're it's always personality flaw. You're always frightened, so it's stop. Anyways, uh, so we uh, we're locked here and would uh, desperately like to get out. Please. Uh, why are you locked in here? Um, I don't know. Uh, we were. Um, I was trying to go to the Underdark, and they found me and locked me up. Uh, I'm assuming because I didn't have much use to them. A as now that banging 
finally go silent, the creature behind that door listening to what's happening, a smaller voice between the other two pops up. Are you really going to ask us why we are being held captive by those creatures? I mean, how do I know this is not true? It does beg to question your level of situational awareness. I mean, we are prisoners, and the creatures that you presumably have fought and killed to get here uh, were your enemies, or you would not be allowed to be outside of the cells. So logic would dictate that we are prisoners. Uh, am I being obtuse? I'm sorry. I'll be. No, Molly. I think those are Molly. I think those are clearly the context clues of the situation. Yes, okay, again, it, how do I know this isn't a trap? Oh, it, in that case, if, if you want to just leave the keys somewhere where we could retrieve them, we will take care of ourselves eventually. That is fine. I'm sure we can figure it out. Uh, Z, I, I don't have the, the energy to go back and forth. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but they're, they're right. I know. I just... <sighs> Yeah, um, and I'm gonna look around for some keys. I'm gonna put my uh, head kind of near the window that sounds like the most of the voices are coming out of. Um, each of these is an individual cell. Each is an individual cell? Yes. Uh, I'm gonna go for the one that sounded like he was more of the keeper of who sounded like a littler being. So that is going to be here. What? I sound the list. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm. I'm just gonna say we're we're looking for the keys. Give us. Give us so just a moment. These are just doors held shut by iron bars. There are no locks. So there's a like a large uh, like block set uh, across the door that is keeping it from swinging outward. See, see, there's, there's no keys. Uh, I see. Okay. Can I get a hand? Yep. And then, uh, heave ho. The steel clatters to the ground and the door swings open of its own weight. Malai, would you like to describe yourself? Uh, Malai is a uh, middle-aged human man, uh, completely bald, except for hair raggedly growing from around uh, his occipital, which is the bone. And anyway, uh, very, very thin, uh, one-armed, wrapped in dirty cloth, um, barefoot, filthy, and kind of just, even though you've opened the door, still kind of like huddling in a corner, well, yes, that that's quite great. You saved us. You can, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Hugo. Which I one is is I don't Hugo? Think to you, there, small one. Uh, my name is Malai Timmins. Uh, I am a native of Icewind Dale, uh, in a roundabout sense. Uh, I would very much like to go back to my cave now. Hello, Molly. I am I'm Altus. Uh, is Z Z? What do you look like right now? Are you? Um, I look like a dwarf-sized uh, Yuanti. Okay, and I'm going to uh, gesture over. This is this is Z. Hello. Uh, Hi. Who um, are you just speaking with? Do we oh, Z? Help me out here. This is Hugo. He has kept me great company while we've been incarcerated. A bit rough around the edges and, and quick to anger, but what do you expect from a man continuously on fire? He sounds like he'll fit right in. Uh, a little help, please. You should let him out. He is uh, much more better at this action-y kind of situation. I move over and yeah. Heave ho the giant steel beams. Ah, feels good to let the flame out a bit. Ah. 
Hugo, would you uh, like to describe yourself? Uh, sure. So in kind of stark contrast to um, Malai, he's six foot tall, uh, fire Janasi. He has um, kind of ashen gray skin with um, portions kind of uh, etched out that are uh, constantly aglow. Um, large beard, uh, that tips of the beard are faintly glowing uh, as if on fire. Same thing with uh, the, the back of his head, uh, back of his hair. Um, he is uh, six foot tall, um, uh, bordering on portly. He's got a little pot belly um, mm. and he kind of strolls out. Ah, oh, feels good to be free again. And again, <laughs> you get slam, slam, slam. Do uh, uh, Hugo, do you know what's making that god awful racket over there? Do I? Know I'm making you? that god awful racket. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. <laughs> do I know of the other prisoners? Um, they have been too far away to really have strong communication with, um, but that one spends at least an hour a day trying to break down the door. Uh, he does that until he wears himself down, and then he uh, presumably falls asleep. Um, kind of like a, a bear cup. Um, if you just get a little wound up, and then eventually he's very playful. Yes, cubs do have a tendency not to know their own strength. I'm surprised he hasn't hurt himself, honestly. He might have. Well, I have, I and I would like to stop. Uh, Z, what's your take on this? I can take or leave. I'm going to walk down and try to open a cell. No one should be stuck here with these demons. You're right. And then after seeing him make his way over there, I'm going to follow. Um, as you as pass, as, go ahead. As soon as I don't see them anymore, I start collecting all of my tools into uh, a backpack uh, as quickly as possible and kind of like rushing over to Hugo's chef cell and like throwing myself in there. <laughs> um as you pass uh, over walking towards the cell from the banging, um, a dirty, gnarled humanoid face pops in uh, from the middle cell. I hope you're not planning on leaving just me here. Do we know anything about them? Um, they have tried to bargain with the guards every time it's mealtime. Um, offering furs and tours and kind of ridiculous things, uh, but never ceasing to have faith that they can find something. As you raise the bar on that far door and it clangs to the ground, it swings open and a Goliath bursts out, throwing his arms up in the air and immediately bear hugs Z lifting your uh, dwarven-sized wanty body off the ground into the air and spinning you around before setting you down. He does a couple of jumping jacks, just getting used to actually having space to move around before uh, clasping your hand finally. Oh, fantastic. Oh, you have no idea what it's like being in there at my size. Uh, okay. Um... Uh. Yeah. Who are you? Uh, Tall Tree. I'm glad you finally came. Is the rest of the rescue party here somewhere? <sighs> That's uh, the issue. One of the rescue party is lying dead just outside the hallway, and the other two we fear may have run into the Underdark. We're not a oh rescue party per se. Oh, well. I'll let you figure out a plan. I'm going to figure out how I can fight. And he immediately just walks past you all back out into the open room here. Hmm. Uh, and then I'm going to go move. That constant banging. I start. <laughs> Bursts out laughing. Does this help? In a, 
deep hearty roar as he rounds the corner. Um, I'll go over and let out the other person. Oh, thank goodness. I really thought it would be you that would do the right thing, Hugo. Uh, of course. Uh, what was your name? Uh, Pico. Yes. Pico. Yeah. I don't think I'd said it. No need. You've, you're not being rude in the slightest. Don't worry. I haven't uh, been around people much, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah. He is a uh, small, gnarled man with malformed ears and pointy teeth. And uh, the two of you that have been around Ted and Towns know that that's a marker of the folk of Dugan's Hole. <gasps> <laughs> the oh. deeply inbred stock of that little fishing oh, town. Oh, Pico, uh, are you a goblin? I've never seen one in person. <laughs> <laughs> that just kind of devolves into a crazy laughter. At the idea of this. Well, Are, we is that can't, correct? Uh, we can't keep see. waiting around here all day. They're going to come back eventually. You're yes. very good at jokes. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think it was funny, but apparently. I, I thought it was funny. I'm not going to lie to anybody. Well, I've never seen one before. I just know they have malformed ears and uh, rather uncomfortable features. I was surprised that he wasn't green because I heard that that was a common trait. I don't. I don't <laughs> think this one is full goblin. I'm <laughs> terrified to ask any more questions, but well, you'll see a goblin. Having, having nearly recovered your comment about not being fully green sends him into another fit causing his loincloth to jostle as his whole body just shakes with this laughter. Uh, going back in and picking up one of the bones he'd saved from the last meal that he'd had. Well, are we ready for battle? <laughs> and oh, I know. <laughs> roughly at this point, Tempest, you have made your way back to the mouth of the entry to the Underdark. I'm, I'm heading back into this room, the forge room. Okay. The first thing that you see as you head back into the room is a large Goliath rooting through the dwarves' bodies. Um, he's found a, a leather belt that he's managed to fashion into a sort of sling, and he's putting javelin after javelin through it on his back. Uh, picking through the, the war picks of those that have fallen to try to find a good one, you kind of see him heft them as you come around the corner. I do a scan and is Finnick's body still on the, it's just on the ground, right? It's right Nearby. there. I hurry up to it. I put Quill down. No, no. And I, hear? Yes. My... Yeah, you can all hear her. I run out. Yeah. I put my head, <laughs> I put my head against his head and I go, I'm sorry, I couldn't protect you, sir. And then I look up and I see Altus and Z. They run in and I just yep. charge at them. <laughs> Like, you're going to attack us? Like, <laughs> no, like, I'm going to hug you both. But. Oh, okay. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, are we going down? Like, um, Z doesn't like hugs, but he's going to heal that happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is your second already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big, big hug out of Altus. Uh, and now, while there's no sound coming out of Altus, you hear or you feel the the motion of sobbing and you hear the sniffling. However, there is no other audible sounds of sobbing. You're, you can feel your feelings though, if you want to. Okay, so I release you and I, I kind of like feel both of your faces to make sure you're okay. And then I look at the Goliath. 
<laughs> and then back he's, at you. <laughs> he's kind of stood awkwardly up and like stepped to with his back against the wall, watching and kind of waiting for the scene to. <laughs> I point over to Finnick and Altus and just a big sniffle. <laughs> Uh, Malai kind of like moves his arms around Hugo tentatively because he's feeling a lot of emotions from the room. <laughs> Is this... Oh, oh, okay. And I'll kind of go in for an awkward hug. Don't know. <laughs> Do you feel better? Yeah. God, are you guys huggers? Please tell me you're not huggers. God, no. <laughs> oh, See, God. I have a confession to make. All this, we've had enough violence for today. I don't need to commit more. Okay, another time then, friend. Uh, Fine, just, yeah, what's up? I just, I I grew up in Neverwinter, and you'd think for such a cold place that Ten Towns would have a little more physical embracing. I just miss it sometimes, okay? That's it. That's all. Okay. That's fine. I'll like put my arm around your shoulder. They're they're there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh huh. And then like pull away and like sidestep <laughs> away a couple steps. Uh um um. Well, there's still there's still the king to deal with. He got away. He must have. I mean, he have. turned invisible. <sighs> Slippery bastard, that one. How is everyone I, looking, HP wise, or just like overall? Really I mean, not I have good. zero spell slots. Yeah, I have one spell slot left. I have like less than two thirds HP. Uh, okay. Oh, as this conversation is happening, I'll kind of just step in and cast Aura of Vitality. Ooh, what's that do? So, healing energy radiates from you in an aura with 30 feet radius. Until the spell ends, the aura moves with you, centered on you. You can choose as a bonus action to cause one creature in the aura to regain 2d6 hit points. So I'll do that every six seconds for a minute to see if I can heal everybody up. Nice. Oh, shit. That's a good amount of healing. So 2d6, you said? Yeah, 2d6 every six seconds. So you do so that. 2d6 times 10. Yep. So split between all of us, we'd all get at least two, right? I mean... Yeah. Math is hard. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so roll, t- roll 2d6 twice. Okay. I, you all look all terrible. Uh, I'll say it terrible. Um, this might help uh, a bit, and I'll um, my beard it's, will flare up uh, a bit, kind of like down my chest, and everyone feels just kind of this warmth, like you're in front of a campfire emanating around me. That's nifty. You're gonna have to teach me that one. It just claps. <laughs> I mean, you could light your beard on fire. It's a calculated I risk. Don't think. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I, I would not suggest it outside of being a fire giant like my friend Hugo. Uh, it is uh, not uh, preferable for those of us who are not immune to flame. I'll find a book well, on it. Maybe, maybe have a discussion later. Pico feels the wave and kind of steps back until he's just outside of it. Uh, The Goliath kind of gets the chills and gets a little good shake out. Still getting used to actually having space required for that size of a body. Um, so Pico steps away from the healing? I mean, none of the prisoners are injured right now. As he does that, I'm going to turn to Malai and just... Your goblin theory is more and more um, relevant. Can I do detect thoughts, but not direct? Okay. Um, so you're doing it on him? Yeah, but I'm not focusing. 
Okay. Uh, you just get a feeling of um, anxiety. And as he gets outside of the range, kind of calms down. Hmm. Does okay. Does Tranquil have any uh, jewelry or items that he kept on him at all? No. Okay. Went to very ornamented party. He had his skulls. Yeah. Mm. I have Shiver's skull. That's right. Can I, like, do I see it? Can I take Shiver's skull and just? If you reach towards his body, I am going to be upset. (laughs) I mean, I was just going to turn it and hand it to Tempest, but. So I'm like running because I see you go for this, but then you like, oh, I got this for you. (laughs) Yes. You want to do that? All right. Yeah. Oh. If it's broken at all, I would cast mending on it and just kind of fix it up a little. Um, we'll never she shivers again, will we? No. no. Um, who had the bag of holding? I believe. I think, <coughs> I think you did, right? Z? Did yeah, I? I think you did. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's this bag of holding in my stuff, huh? Yeah, that's, that's probably why. <laughs> totally. Oh, that was totally why. Hazard to guess. Yeah. Mm. And our yeah. dogs and stuff, we left nearby, right? Yeah. Okay. They're outside. Right. They're at the base of the mountain, I believe. Oh, right. I they're not, okay. We've been gone a while. <laughs> I do not have an accounting of what's in the back of holding. I think it's but, mostly rations right now. That's right. <laughs> uh, and like with the amount of dog food. <laughs> It's been multiple games for us, um, but maybe four or five hours has passed yeah. total since you guys entered this place. Maybe. Um, I know these are our friends and they've fallen, but should we see what we can use from them to ensure that our lives aren't in vain? Can we loot the bodies later? I mean, I think we need to leave and figure out what we're doing. I don't think that we should necessarily camp here. Well, I plan on taking both of them with us so we can get what's on them later. Fair enough. Uh, Posture check, everybody. Major Mayhem (laughs) just wants to make sure we're all sitting up straight and healthy. Major Major Mayhem. Mayhem. I do not stop you. Reminding me I have horrible posture. I mean, um, all I have horrible posture, so. <laughs> we'll go ahead and throw in a hydrate for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, right. So what are you all doing next? <clears throat> Marlai is going to kind of, like, move his backpack strap over to his stump and kind of hold it with his stump and then he's going to pick up the nearest club like looking thing and kind of just like hold it. Wait, what did he do? Uh, so Molly only has one arm. Right. So he has like, kind of like a satchel with all his tools in it. So he moved it to that side and he's holding it down and then he picks up a stick or a weapon of some kind, just whatever's laying around that looks like it could club someone. <laughs> Um, the Goliath walks up to you and offers the war pick that he'd taken off of one of the bodies. Oh, that looks incredibly heavy. Um, no, thank you. Uh, tall tree, was it? Uh, Kapanook. Kapanook tall tree. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. In giant, we'll say. Uh, I appreciate the offer, though. <laughs> He kind of looks surprised at uh, that response and responds to you back in giant, suit yourself. And then I say a common giant phrase that I read in a book. Okay. To infinity and beyond. Where are we going from here? What's the plan? What are we doing? The tundra sounds wonderful. We can't leave yet. We have to kill the king. 
well, we could go kill the king, then we're free to go. Um, that's, that's right. A great thought, but I have no magic left. I, I'm going to look at my hands and notice I can't summon any black into them and just, yeah, me neither. I'm gassed. Camp out nearby. Come back in the morning. So leave. Okay. Unless you want to sleep in this place. No, it I'm, could I'm, be. Just, I'm just working it through my head. That makes sense. Once you get used to the cold, it's not terrible to sleep here. We know. We could all huddle together and, and sleep on top of one another. That would that would be nice. I, I would appreciate that. Oh. <laughs> God, we hooked up with more touchy feely. Why? Oh, all right, let's let's go find a place to camp. Where are you planning on going to camp? Are you going back like up the elevator mm-hmm. to try to get to the ground level again? Where are we? We're going into yeah, the underdark. It sounds like going. Okay. Okay. It sounds like we're gonna go meet up with the dogs. Is that what you're thinking, Tempest? Check on them? Yes, I, I would okay. definitely need to check on them. Yeah. Okay. So that was like yeah. pretty close to the stairs, right? Are we taking the bodies with us now? Yes. Okay. All right, and you're going I, back uh, to the elevator. I have no winter clothes. Uh, so I, I, I guess just put me back in my cell and then come back for me. I, I don't know. Uh, I attempt to scavenge some clothes from. I give, I give you my jacket. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll I'll snap my fingers and call uh, Mordecai, and um, kind of a medium-sized uh, wolf made purely of fire appears right next to you, and I'll say, uh, "Stay close to Mordy. He he'll take care of you." Hello, you are not normal. I'm going to pull out a notebook from my pack and begin to write that down. And like, I have so much to learn. The 10 towns just keep bewildering me. What was the creature name that you used? Mordecai. No, I, what, what is he made of fire? Oh, he is a fire spirit. Oh, okay. Oh, he's a, he's a wild, wildfire spirit, but he forms into a fox. Um, fox. Okay. Made of like pure fire. I will scavenge some boots off of one of the dead Druigar, though. So I have shoes. Yeah. yeah, you managed to do that pretty easily. There's uh, a lot of bodies strewn around this area. You all managed yeah. to do quite a bit of damage before. Uh, do any of them have better armor than what I have? They're all wearing chain. Okay. Yeah, it's much more uniform here than it was outside. Okay. Um, so making your way uh, back to the elevator, it is eerily quiet. Um, as you get through the gates back into that room that connected to the Underdark, you start to lose the sounds of the furnace and the boiling magma. The two Duragar that greeted you at the elevator are standing on either side of the door as you enter into the throne room. Still, uh, as soon as Malai sees the Druigar, he's going to run back to his cell. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's more of us, Malai. It's, it's all right. And so they're... They're, they're not, not going to hurt us. Yeah. Oh. I might hurt them. And Snarl. I wouldn't stop you. Snarl at them. But you. there's a coup underway, kind of. And they're more on our side than the other side. As you say the word coup in unison, they stamp their war picks on the ground and then return to motionlessness. Are we joking? There was a code word the whole time? Thanks, guys. The one, I turned to Z, the one thing they understand in common is coup. Apparently. The, I think they understand us. They just don't want to talk to us. They didn't help us enough in that battle, don't you think? I don't think that they're supposed to help us at all. 
and I don't know. I think we need to move on. Agreed. Where's the the? Did he run back to the cell? Malai. Malai was his name. I think no, it no, sounded like Hugo managed. Yeah, he managed to stop him. Okay. Um, as you all enter the throne room, they close those hallway doors behind you, but there's no um, sort of force or anything stopping you as you make your way back to the elevator. Um, I think for most of you, this may not even be an area that you've seen before as you enter into this grand throne room, the throne made of Shardolin sitting jagged on the shelves, bodies of Quagos littering the ground. None of this is natural. The elevator comes at regular intervals yet again as it brings you all up to the level above, back into the cold and drafty, empty guard room. Making your way out of the fortress, the winds whip outside and it's just at the end of the twilight hours going from that, uh, that half light into darkness as you make your way down the cliffs of Zardarok's sun blight, at the base of which several animals wait patiently. I run up to them and I show them Quill's body. And... The dogs all gather around immediately. Those that didn't immediately approach as you did, joining, each nuzzling in from a different side. A few of them, as these dogs always seemed a little bit too sentient, seem to immediately know what's happening. A few others nudge his body, trying to get him to move, licking his face. But eventually they each lay down one by one, heads on his shoulders, heads on his chest and close their eyes to rest. In a language that no one recognizes, Malai starts kind of grunting, singing uh, a very sad sounding song. I will put my hand on Tempest's shoulder. Hopefully she doesn't punch me. Um, And I'll (laughs) cast Speak With Animals on her. And I'll say, uh, uh, I don't know much, but you might need this. Thank you. I'm sorry, I couldn't protect him. I say to the dogs. You see, one gets up and moves over to you. And it nuzzles against your leg, leaning against you lifting its head, looking up at you. And it doesn't speak, but it makes it clear the love that they still have for you. And you just hear the faintest, softest whimper. It's not your fault. I just hug her and cry. Oh my God. She puts her head over your shoulder. <sighs> the axe speaks are here okay too yeah um not as emotionally sensitive as dogs uh <laughs> now that you have speak with animals cast on you you kind of hear this distant sound of food food <laughs> food <laughs> I feed everybody i get every- all that tinker yeah they- I'll, help. I'll help with the feeding if She'll let me. I just, does, I just give it to you. The feedback. <laughs> Say, walk by you. Does Does anyone have any gear in disrepair? I could work on repairing anything or updating things. All right. <laughs> um, here, Mordecai. Well, can you make my armor bigger? So I don't have to be a dwarf dwarf size anymore? It would take me some time, but I could 
I could work on that yet. Are you planning on a growth spurt? He, Something uh, like that, yeah. I would need to know the proper dimensions you wanted it to be in. <laughs> I'll take it off and go back to normal Z size. Oh. Oh. Uh, a furbolg? You're a furbolg? No, uh, Z, roll a perception check. Me? Z. Oh. Uh, it's 18. Okay. Um, clear reaction uh, from Pico on that jumps back again um, as Kapanook is down petting the dogs, um, clearly just excited to see wildlife again. Um, I'm going to do detect that, so I'm going to focus this time because I want to know why he's freaking out. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Just a second. Let me get a, a quick roll for that. So um, he has to make a wisdom saving throw. Got it. What is everybody else doing right now? Um, I'll kind of, having been away from kind of animals and wildlife for a long time, um, I'll call him a like red bull and feeding the animals and just kind of like petting them and making sure they're all taken care of. I'm going to be just kind of with Tempest, not saying anything if she doesn't want to talk, but I'm going to be near her if she needs anything. I guess I'm after the, the animals are fed, I'm scoping out like a bet, a good place to, to camp. Like if this place is exposed where we left all the gear, like if there's a better place nearby, I, so I, roll I believe, <laughs> if I'm not wrong, you guys were just kind of like right there, if you guys can see that on the map, kind of just around the corner from where it was. Um, go ahead and roll survival. Or, and actually, so that Altus does this roll, I'll be like, Altus, should we camp here or is there somewhere that's better? Um, let me, let me look around. Uh, and I actually don't have nature or anything. Uh, well, survival. Survival. Oh, you have survival. that right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'm gonna turn away from Tempest and kind of like, oh, you can do this. <laughs> and as I do that, I uh, cast guidance on myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, Did you roll survival all this? I am. I okay. am. I just took away my really loud dice roller because I realized everybody could hear it everywhere. Uh, that's it's a dirty 20. Okay. Actually, yeah. wait. That's a 24. Just uh, around the uh, ridge from where you are, uh, there is not a cave, but like an indent in the rock itself that protects it from the, the snow. So you know that no matter the weather that comes, um, it, you'll stay dry. Um, the area itself seems like it's uh, probably been used by uh, either the regget or trappers or somebody because it's um, not recently been used, but it's clear that like areas have been cleared out and there's uh, a long leftover stack of woods from a burnt out fire. but it seems to be a safe place to camp. Okay. Move us over there. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Z, uh, there was a 19. So I believe that beats. Yeah, so he knows that I was trying to read his thoughts, but nothing happens. Um, do you at first get this cloud of, a, of um, like, emotions going back and forth at each other, kind of one after the other, after the other getting layered, and then nothing. Um, um, sorry, go ahead. The Goliath uh, helps to kind of carry things, pick things up, help um, move the dog sled so the dogs don't have to drag it, uh, kind of get you guys and your equipment underneath this overhang. 
And as you do so, he builds up a fire in the center of it. Um, I'm going to go to Pico. What's Kind of after this. Uh, Mr. Z? Yeah. Uh, here, uh, and I hand you your armor. Uh, it doesn't look like it's changed, but if you could attempt to put it on, it seems counterintuitive, but I promise. I, I try to put it on. So I have enchanted the armor, so now as magical armor, it should reform to whatever form you're in. Uh. So once it's reformed into the right shape, I then disenchant it so it should stay in that form statically. Yeah. Oh. That's handy. Oh. I then take my smithing tools that I was using, run my hand across them, and turn them back into kind of like more generic tools. And I put them what back ability was that that did that? That was really cool. Uh, so... I kind of took some liberties because infused item lets you make something yeah. magical and magical armor resizes to the wearer. So I kind of A to B did. It. It's, not, <laughs> it's not explicitly said, but that's how it should work given how magic armor works. <laughs> so, New we'll, merch go over idea. The, we'll go over the time limits on that next time but i do like it for here <laughs> New oh, no. merch idea rio it should work this way <laughs> <laughs> infused item i can do as an action so i think changing an infusion uh takes a long rest sure but i had those prepared and i haven't used them today because i've been in prison <laughs> awesome yeah it's uh, a new infused armor item cool. well now it's no longer infused I end the infusion so it's just normal armor now but in the right size um, I put my hand on your shoulder and give you a squeeze and say thanks that was that's just very nice thank you yeah yeah you're welcome um uh, does it get warmer than this? No. Just, you still have my jacket, the by the way. Oh, oh, do you need that back? I'm very frail. It's fine. All right. Is there anything you guys want to do before you go down for your rest? Yeah, I'm going to go over to Pico and... Um, I'm sorry I tried to intrude on your thoughts. It was not nice of me to do without asking. No, no, it's understandable. I'm sure that you all have experienced some terrible things. I, I know that uh, Tapanook and myself have been under much duress. Much duress. Uh-huh. Where are you from again? Dugan's <laughs> Hole. Beautiful little uh-huh. place on the side of the lake. How long Captured you while there? hunting. Uh, ooh, I, I don't know if I know exactly what day it is. It's hard to tell the passing of time underground. If I had to guess, I would say probably somewhere around two, three months, perhaps more. I was here before uh, Kapanook saw him brought in. Put up a hell of a fight, that one. Could see why they call him Tall Tree. <laughs> I'm assuming okay. it's a cultural name and not a descriptor. Potato, potato, two birds, one stone, you know. I do not. What are those? Are those sayings? Oh. Oh. It's a little late to get into that, I think. Uh, I'm going to turn in myself. It is nice to sleep out in the open air once more. It is nice to see the blessed lights again. You can hear the loud snoring of the Goliath already asleep by the fireside. All right. Well, I'll, watch. I'll take it with you. I haven't seen outside in about a month or so. Um, I'd love to uh, just kind of be here. Excellent. <laughs> uh, do we have a assignment for second watch? Please second. Okay. 
podcast. All right. So as we resume, uh, we have Tempest and Hugo on watch. Can I get a perception check from each of you? Uh, Molly, uh, Molly uh, will try and snuggle up to anyone who looks either deep enough asleep not to notice or like not upset by it because he's not used to sleeping by himself. The Goliath is dead asleep. And as you move up to the very large body, he kind of grunts, lets out another snore and throws an arm over. (laughs) (laughs) What are my perception checks? I got an at 20. Ooh, nice. I got a 14. Um, Hugo, you mostly catch everything, but it is a little distracting to be out here, especially with the bracing cold after months under that furnace. I'm looking at the stars, too, just being, just enjoying being outside again. Um, Tempest, it is almost bizarrely silent. There's not the sounds of bats or night birds. Nothing's scurrying like it does in the forest. None of the nocturnal mammals. It's almost as if this valley is entirely dead. And as you both keep your watch, bursting across the sky is the aurora coming from east to west as it makes its path. The blues and greens and purples lighting up the night to that twilight. I was like already really fidgety when the Aurora starts. I just start pacing restlessly. So, um, where are you from? (laughs) Shit. (laughs) What was that city we decided on? I'm so sorry. Luskin. 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 Oh. Never been there. Never it sucks. To a big city. Spent most of my life in the woods. Um, well, uh, I, I, I see that you have had some loss. And I, if it's any consolation, uh, you can take pride in knowing that they're being returned to the earth. I know that is what keeps me going. So, that's all. I hope, I hope so. I continue pacing. Both of the bodies now wrapped in cloth as you made your way over here. Sit next to each other on the back of one of the dog sleds. Just out of view of the fire, but the silhouettes still stand. So, was there like 40 people in Luskin? 50? I can't imagine more than that. Um, I mean, it's snow, insert larger city here, but. Water deep. Yeah, I mean, it, there's it probably actually, a couple thousand. It's a it's a big port city. Thousand? Oh, oh. is a couple thousand accurate? Then I'm sorry. At least, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ah, no, 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 thank you. Each and every one of them an asshole. Also true. I can I, see that. So you grew up in the woods, like, with your family. Yeah, the, the high woods. Um, uh, family, yes, more so um, the wood and the animal are my friends. Uh, right below the the Lost Peaks. Uh, I don't know if you've seen them or heard of them, but um, yeah, uh, it, was, it was nice. So what got you in a Drew Rigar prison? Well, uh, I've been searching for someone. Um, I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, uh, Driz Doerden. 
Uh, I've been searching for him, and I heard he was in the Underdark, so uh, I tried to go... Well, first I came to the Ten Towns to find him, but he wasn't here, so then I figured I'd try to go to the Underdark, and, well, um, that's when they caught me and locked me up. The Underdark is... Why would he be there? That's just what I've heard around the Ten Towns that he, he left quite a bit ago to go to the Underdark. Uh, I don't know why. Um, I imagine it's probably bad there, but I can't imagine it's any worse than being around a thousand people. Uh, they teach their own, I guess. <laughs> The rest of the watch continues to pass in that silence until it's time to wake up your relief. Kixie awake and pass out. While I will take the watch, he's having trouble sleeping anyway. She's gonna kick me awake, huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> But it's I'll, in an affectionate way. <laughs> I'll like slowly take the barbarian or the Goliath's arm off of Molly, not trying not to wake the Goliath, and like see if I can pull him out. Molly, it's time to watch. Roll stealth. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, that's a fourteen. Yeah, uh, he's asleep, so that is enough. Um, as you do that, his arm jerks out of yours and he rolls onto the other side, never breaking the single snore that carried him across. So we're left with Malai, Malai. and Z. Uh, Malai gets up, uh, puts a hand on Hugo's chest and then puts his forehead on his and goes, uh, in a language again you don't understand, says something and then goes, oh, uh, uh, good morning. Uh, is this a tradition? Good, and I'll put my hand on his chest and go do the same. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm not used to being around people. Oh, me neither. Did you know there's a thousand of them in one place? No, impossible. Yeah, sounds horrible. How would they feed them? I don't know. They don't always do a good job of that. Oh, it's the Furbolg. I, I apologize, and I'll go over and I'll put my hand on <laughs> Z's chest and my head to his, too. Uh, <laughs> this is what we do, right, Ma Malai? Yeah, yes, that is how you greet someone in the morning. Hmm. Unless they are significantly younger than you, in which case you just put your hand on their forehead. How old are you, Z? Oh, that's a good question. I... Early 20s, I think we kind of yeah, landed. Yeah, early 20s. He doesn't have a set age, yeah. No, no. And I can't really do it properly because your other arm should go on the forehead when you do the gesture, but I unfortunately lost mine in a, a bit of rabble-rousing. Rabble-rousing, huh? Yes, my siblings uh, were significantly stronger than me, so uh, play fighting could be dangerous if my mother was there. Interesting. <laughs> so, uh, as we bid <laughs> sorry uh, as we <laughs> bid Hugo and Tempest goodnight can I have a perception roll from Z and Hugo or and um, Mala wow, I. I got so used to saying these names that I'll never say again <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, four okay Oh, well, uh, here's hoping I do better than that. <laughs> okay, that's an 18. Okay. Um, the As you both take your watch, uh, there is the same sort of just total stillness as the aura blazes on above you. Um, Malai, you hear in the distance the sound of metal clashing and then... Uh, <laughs> a yell that seems to take a very long time to resolve into a quiet <laughs> thud. 
Oh, I, I think there's somebody out there. Sergeant Rock. Um, where, what, where did that come from? Where did, what? Where did it come from? Inside the house. Coulter? Uh, sorry, I, th- I thought you were, <laughs> I thought you were saying that in character, not to me. Um, it comes from the direction of the fortress. Oh. It came from that way, near the fortress. I mean, we need to rest. We can figure it out in the morning. Oh, what if somebody's in danger? I don't think any of us are in a position to attempt to help that right now. Oh, we could wake the the suck uh, the demon, your demon friend. She's not. No. She needs sleep. I did not know extra planar being slept. I will make note of that. She's not a demon. I mean, I have read books and she is very clearly demonic by nature. (laughs) Okay, so just because you've read books, you know exactly what a demon looks like? Well, not looks like, but the the qualifying features. (laughs) Zeal shift into look like a tiefling. So does this make me a demon? Well, yes, but you are a furbolg. You are natural shapeshifters. So that's uh, common for you. <laughs> I'm just going to shake my head and go back to normal Z. <laughs> Unless she is also a furbolg. I guess that would make sense. Neither of us are... Uh, she's not a furbolg. Well, I don't want to press her on the matter. She seems very brisk at the passing of her... Uh, Brother. Oh, her brother. Oh. Okay. Where where are you from, friend? Oh, I'm from the Dale. How long have you been in the Dale? Oh, all my life, actually. Which uh which city? Oh uh we stayed away from the cities, uh uh so I, I lived uh, in the mountain. It's dangerous living. Ah, I was I was cared for. So dangerous living. I'm sorry, you were yawning. I didn't understand. You. <laughs> it's still dangerous living. Sorry. I was cared for. Okay. <laughs> Well, I just stayed in the cave and read books by the firelight and tinkered with stuff and, you know, mostly self-taught. What is that language that you speak? Oh, uh, 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 are you not familiar with the Yeti tongue? No, I'm, I'm not actually. It's very similar to giant and dwarvish with a little bit of orc thrown in there. It's, it's, it's a fascinating language. Uh, mostly gestures, which means I have a very strong accent, but... <laughs> okay. All right. Do you find a lot of use for that language? Well, no one else seems to understand it, but I, it is like my cultural heritage, so I, I, a common is more... I learned that from books. Okay, so I don't know if Z is smart enough to make this connection. <laughs> so Z is not going to ask the question that Hank really wants to ask. <laughs> Do you want to uh, roll a nature check to try and oh, figure it out? I mean, sure. Eleven. I don't think that's because my intelligence is zero. Yeah. And so even though we don't be able to bridge one. that gap quite yet. Yeah, no. <laughs> There's like an inkling of like, wait, hold on. But no, we're, we're not quite there yet. Okay. Well, I, you know, I mean, if I ever meet a, I mean, the, 
I wonder if Yemen are talk speaks Yeti. Oh. Sorry, who were you talking about? I mean, I'm the, Jesus talking to himself. And he's like wondering if a Yemen are talk, you know, but now Phoenix gone, so it doesn't matter. So <laughs> he's just like talking to himself in circles, like the morning episode. Trying not to cry. No. Uh, so Malai is going to uh, take uh, a Tempest jacket while he's near the fire so he can be as warm as possible. And he's going to, um, from the brief time that he saw them, he's going to put the markings of Tranquil's markings on the jacket because uh, he wants to make her a thank you present. It's mm. <laughs> cute. I love that. Um, Z will try to help him if he can throw in any details that he may not have seen. <laughs> not any like details. That. Not <laughs> like that. Oh, God. No, I meant like I if mean, you can get a good enough look. I mean, Z has seen the markings more than anyone else. Yes, exactly. So, like, but not those ones. Well, <laughs> That's not something I would make you roll for. That's a, a lovely innate ability. Um, yeah, it's just my magical tinkering. Yeah. Um, with the end of your uh, artwork on the jacket, we reach the point where the aurora dissolves again into that pitch darkness of morning. I say some words in Yeti as the mystical lights fade. Yeah. And the rest of you begin to stir awake, refreshed. Uh, Coulter, would it be possible to me take like other stuff that we have and maybe make some winter clothes from all I? Uh, you still have her winter clothes for now, correct? Yeah. Um, okay, so <laughs> there's a couple options here. Uh, I believe there may have been a spare set of winter clothes in with your packing of stuff. Um, so you could definitely get one, I would say, out of the um, bag of holding. Or obviously you have two bodies wearing winter clothing. But I would prefer the bag maybe. of holding. Yeah. So there is, uh, there is a set of uh, winter clothing in the bag of holding. Then after I finish the coat for Tempest, I will spend the rest of my time, uh, spend an hour, turn my smithing tools into tailoring tools, and then uh, adjust it to my size. So one of the sleeves. Okay. Excellent. Um, but turning a hammer into a needle and thread is quite impressive. <laughs> 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 um Excellent. So as everybody begins to wake up, uh, you are in your new winter clothes or refashioned winter clothes as Tempest Jacket uh, is completed. And I uh, present it to her. In thanks. I like take a knee. Thank you. Uh, it seemed like a fitting tribute. Uh, we often wear the deeds of our fallen people upon the fur. Uh, this is the closest equivalent. I did not know what he had accomplished, so I figured the tattoos that glow upon his body would suffice. And the markings actually do glow like Tranquil's did. This is, I, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for saving me. Well, I don't regret doing that yet, so. Oh, You're well, welcome. I should hope that you never regret doing that. You're heading the right direction. We are standing still. <laughs> are we ready? <laughs> all right. What are you all doing uh, upon waking up? It smells cold out this morning. It is. I took the liberty of taking some of your spare winter clothes and crafting some for myself. I hope that is not out of the question. That's I, fine. 
Hank, I think you're muted. That's fine. Um, well, shall we go back and kill the king? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, what was, what did you hear last night? Oh, there was uh, the sounds of what I assumed was fighting, and then somebody called out before falling to the ground. So we may keep an eye out on the way for anything was untoward. It, was it a male voice that called out or a, a female voice? May have sounded a little bit older and kind of crass. I don't know. What did I hear? Um, it was not distinguishable from the distance. I don't know. You guys all kind of sound the same. I'm still getting used to gender differences. Understood, I, a- I guess. Yeah, Z Cox has had like there's something itch in there, but I look at Z and give him a very puzzled look. Z like yeah, like I got you. There's something Something weird there. So what do we say to Grand Alpha if we see her? Is that her name? Am I getting that right? Grand Alpha? If we see Grand Alpha, I don't know if I can walk away. So we should pray to not see Grand Alpha. Okay. Tempest, what are you thinking? Agreed. If I see her, she's going down. Every single Drurigar is going down. Uh, if possible, before we fight the king, if we could find uh, my armor, I would be much more useful. You can wear armor? Yeah. Is it like a chain mail? You don't wear a breastplate, do you? No, it's full plate armor. Full plate armor. I'll be damned. Uh, Are you from Dugan's Hole too? The place baffles me. No, I've heard Dugan's Hole is quite awful. As have I. Okay, just checking. Yeah, to be fair, it is. <laughs> Pico shows up right next to Altus without you having heard him approach <laughs> and joins into the conversation. Uh, also wearing winter clothes. Those aren't my gauntlets, are they? Yeah, do we recognize those as our clothes too? Or uh, he, yeah, you guys brought extra winter clothes and that's what he's wearing. He took it. Okay. <laughs> well. <clears throat> let's go. Oh, All right, quickly. Um, are you go ahead. Uh, quickly, uh, Tempest, was it? Yeah. Uh, uh, I did not want to take it from you during the night, but could I see your axe for a moment? Are you going to put I? fancy designs on it? I just drop it down next to you, but you put some fancy designs on it too? Uh, no, I, I was thinking something more practical. Uh, and I take out a uh, whetstone and like, uh, I don't know, other stuff. And I tinker with her axe for a moment. And then it glows with kind of like a sheen of like exceptional quality. And then I hand it back. You now have a plus one great axe. Oh, thank you. Fine work, sir. <laughs> now, I, uh, the, now we go. <laughs> the Goliath like kind of looks at his... War pick that he stole and looks at the axe. It'll do. Um, Are you leaving the animals in the overhang or are you taking them back to the base with you? I would leave them, I think. I'd say we leave them, yeah. With the bodies, too. So it takes about 20 minutes to walk from where you are back over there. Um, You were a little bit quicker with them, but it's still very close to the base of it. Um, Approaching the base of that stairway that you took up the first time, there is the body of a soldier, Durgar, 
dead in the snow, sprawled out on its back. Does uh, he look familiar? <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, looks like any of the others that you've seen. Kick him off a stairway. <laughs> Keep moving. Yeah. All right. So it is still very quiet as you return to Sunblight. Um, do you take the same path to get back to the nope. uh, level or a different one? Do we think he's now on a different level? I think if he is, I think we work our way up. We start at the bottom and flesh him out. Yeah. Okay. Down we go. Unless he runs uh, into the Underdark and then God help him. I'm also looking for anything that might resemble uh, Malai's armor. I don't really know what I'm looking for, but anything that I haven't seen on a Durgar anywhere. Keeping our eyes peeled. Yeah. Yeah, if there's or, any like closets or anything, we should check those, I guess, too, along the way. But. Um, yeah, say so go ahead and uh, I mean, so you're starting on that middle level as before. There's still the three unexplored rooms in that level, um, but you know, there's also more unexplored rooms in the forge level below. I say we head to the forge first. Did I ever see Malai in his armor? I don't think so. Because um, you, I believe, if I remember properly from how people arrived, Malai was there before you. Okay. Um, I'm imagining he can probably explain the intricacies of his armor. So I'm going to cast locate object based on the description he gave me. Schwanky. So describe or name an object that is familiar to you. Um, it's up to you if it's familiar to me, if he's just describing it to me, I guess. I mean, I could describe it in great detail. I am an artificer. Yeah. If you... I mean, if you take a good 10 minutes to actually walk through all, you know, bolt by bolt, arm by arm, I would say that's fair enough to okay. cast locate object. Okay, so um, you sense the direction of the object as long as it's uh, within a thousand feet of you. Uh, if the object is in motion, you know the direction of its motion. Uh, spell can locate specific objects known to you as long as uh, you have seen it up close. Uh, alternatively, the spell can locate the nearest object of a particular kind, such as blah, blah, blah. But, so I guess uh, within a thousand feet of me, I'll get pinged of the direction. Um, so if you guys are actually returning to the forge room itself, you did not see a single Durgar, including the two that were guarding the door when you left. There is no soul in sight. Um, when you get back down here, the furnace itself is still bubbling away and you get a ping that the armor, and I'll go ahead and just show this to you, is that way. Ah, follow me. <laughs> and I'll go in the direction. Follow. And you guys should all have control of your tokens now. We'll follow you. You said it was this way, that said? way from Hugo. So over here somewhere? Oh, my bad. <laughs> the wrong direction. Yeah. Approaching <laughs> over there, um, you see the base of the uh, of a platform that's kind of covered in broken pieces of shardolin that appears to have some sort of um, scaffolding that would have held some large uh, construct. And then there are a set of the most ornate doors that you've seen in the entirety of the place thus far. Um, while every other door here has been just straight slate, um, these appear to be metal with carving running up from the base, depicting images uh, of Durgar uh, mining and moving up through the surface and at the top of it is uh, Durgar standing, holding a war pick above his head. Oh, quite a bitch. Uh, I'm going to take a wild guess and say this is it. Kick or stealth? Kick. I'm done with stealth. Well, hang on. Let me kick. inspect the door before you kick it. 
Just in case. <sighs> Can I check for traps? <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, that's going to be a 17. Um, does not appear to be trapped. All right. And then I step back and let her kick open the door. <laughs> a kick. Where's... Okay. Um, you don't need to roll for it because it's not locked or barred oh, or anything. Um, really? So you reveal this area. Kick that Drew regard little right in his stupid little carved face. <laughs> okay. So um, inside this room, you could hear loud mechanical noises that seem to come behind the south wall standing in the middle of the room facing the double door to the north is a seven foot tall statue of a female duragar in scale male robe the top of its head above the eyes has been sheared off making space for a stone brazier that gives <sighs> off a flickering flame chained to the statue's pedestal is an emaciated malformed creature with rubbery purple gray flesh bulbous head with a metal plate bolted to it and sinister eyes. Next to the statue, kneels Zardarok. <clears throat> Soot stained, gray bearded Duragar, still wearing his jagged black crown on his brow and that spiky black gauntlet in one hand. Urge! Roll right. for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. you gotta be fucking... <laughs> Seven. Okay. Um, Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen? Thirteen. Two. Five. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I am useless in combat without my armor. <laughs> Just hold your action or... Yeah, that's okay. Uh... Still learning to remember new names. Sorry, guys. All right. And for our dearly beloved. All right. Ooh, that's fantastic. Uh, okay, first up, it's Molly, uh, Malai. <laughs> um uh <laughs> looks for his armor <laughs> do i see my armor anywhere not in this room Damn. oh i have so many new spells okay that's so that's so uh i'm gonna cast uh blur on myself okay <sighs> excellent and uh unless you so anything else body uh, I take one of my tools and I rub it along my arm and then, well, I guess I can't do that. Uh, I just become blurry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Is there anything else that you like to do on your turn? Uh, no, I'm just going to get over here by, uh, so I'm not in direct sight of the door. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Z? Um, Z is... Oh. Does the creature, what does the creature look like that's chained? Uh, so, <laughs> okay. Um, so it is a, it's chained to the pedestal of the statue and it is a malformed creature, vaguely humanoid in shape with rubbery purple gray flesh, a bulbous head and a metal plate bolted to its head with sinister eyes. Sinister. If you... Want to roll a nature or something? You can, but is that a free action? Or does that take my turn? <laughs> I'll give you a free action because this is just to see if you recognize it. Can I assist? You I already had to... your turn. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm just giving him advantage. That's all I want to do. I mean, I got a sixteen. Uh, that is a very, very poorly treated um, mind flare. It has had all of its mouth tentacles chopped off. Um, and that oh. would make sense why it has a metal plate bolted to its head to stop its telekinetic powers. Wow. Oh, that's so bad. 
God. Because I hate mind flayers so much. Yeah. A lithid chain oh. to the bottom of the block. You know who else hates um, mind flayers? Duragar. Um, I and that's canon. Yell at the or I like seethe to the mind flare in deep speech. I'll deal with you later. Um, or you'll pay for your crimes later, and I'm gonna hurl something at this dude. He's already paying. <laughs> oh, he's gonna pay more. Don't you worry. <laughs> Don't you worry. Um actually. Um we're gonna do yeah, we're gonna do a guiding bolt. Um at Jared Rock. That is a oh damn. 25 to hit. That hits. Okay. He's going to take fifteen radiant damage. Okay. Excellent. Good hit. Okay. And Z After Stan, Z, where he's at? Altus. Uh, wow, with the seven, I'm not last. I know both me and Mark rolled lower than that. You should see what I rolled for everybody. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Um, nobody's charged in there yet. And while that makes me nervous, uh, the hatred seething up through my veins overrules it. Uh, so I'm going to pull out the rapier uh, and I'm going to say uh, for my fallen as and casting divine favor into it as a bonus action. And then I'm going to run and I measure it out. He is 25 feet away. Excellent. And I'm going to run in. Is that there? Ah. Yeah. Roll 20 is weird. Ah, I'm close to the Mind Flayer, and that I don't like that, but... Oh, well. <laughs> you don't know it's a Mind Flayer, maybe. maybe oh, wait, no, he, he told us, right? Uh, no, no, I didn't say anything. I said something in, in uh, deep speech, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah? That's right, at, yeah. At this point, I trust Z. <laughs> Uh, and again, the seething hatred boiling over my blood kind of overrules everything. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, attack with the rapier. Okay. You have advantage, by the way, because guiding bolt. First attack after guiding bolt. That's right. I can't remember what his AC is. What did you uh, roll? <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I need to use guided strike. <laughs> well tell me okay i can't tell you what i rolled unless i yeah you remember you rolled with advantage though, right? oh. i did roll with advantage and okay. it wasn't that great yeah okay. i'm gonna guided strike it so okay. after guided strike it was a 25 to hit definitely hits uh so then it's d8 six plus the divine favor so seven piercing damage, and then I'm going to... Oh, I already used my bonus action for divine favor. That's fine. Okay. How much uh, damage? Uh, seven piercing damage total. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, as you get him right between two chinks of the chain mail, uh, that will bring us from Altus down to Hugo. I'll look over to Tempest and say, how close do you want to be to him? right next to him. Um, I will then move Sorry, I just gotta Cool. I'll move right there. Use my action to summon Mordecai. So he's right next to me. Um, 
I'll say like right here. Okay. Right next to me, right here. And then can he acts on my bonus action. Can I have him hold his action until Tempest gets close to me? Sure. Cool. Okay, so that takes us from Hugo down to Zardarok. Um, Zargarok is going to immediately lash out against Altus as the one that's directly in front of him. Um, that is going to be... That will be hmm. a, uh, a 7 to hit and a 17 to hit. Uh, the 17 meets. Okay, excellent. So that is seven piercing damage plus Altus, you feel something strange happen as to you, the room feels like it begins to shake the strange pulse emanating out from Zarda rock. Uh, and you take with that an additional five psychic damage. So 12 damage total, seven piercing, five psychic. Ooh. And you hear over the sound of this mechanical noise in the other room, the door come crashing open as one of those hammerers enters the room. Ooh, and lovely. that is the end of their turn, Tempest. All right, I'm gonna run on by, beep, beep, beep. So she's gonna use 15 to get right behind me, 15 of her movement, and then Mordecai is going to use his held action to um, fiery teleportation, both of us. So that is the spirit and each willing creature within five feet of, uh, of the creature can teleport up to 15 feet to an unoccupied square. Um, that Then each creature within five feet of the space that the spirit left must succeed on a deck saving throw or take 1d6 damage. Um, so sorry, <laughs> uh, Altus. Altus. <laughs> But that will put us all on the other side of him. Excellent. Okay. Okay. And, okay. and I'm going to attack twice. Go right ahead. Okay. Tempest, if you take the spot that Malachi's in now, you will have advantage. Mordecai. Oh, Mordecai. Okay. That's Sorry. what I was trying to do. I wanted to be flanking. So where you got that it. Is. Okay. Um, okay. So that's the plus one on my axe that you gave me. That's plus one to everything or just. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be two 18s to hit. Both hit. And take this. Oh, and I'm going to rage. Pew. Mark, did you roll that 1d6 damage or do I? No, so that's uh, it's d6 plus my um, proficiency bonus, so it's 6 damage unless you make the deck save. Okay, what's the deck save? Uh, I think it's 15. Okay, so he takes 32 damage 16. From Sorry. My, it's okay, from Dang. my axes and okay. uh, 3 yeah. extra fire damage from my rage, and I think that's probably going to get some other people that's going to definitely get the fire spirit. Maybe he's resistant. We'll hope. <laughs> Hugo. Yeah, so that, Hugo. Uh, and then I guess the, yeah, that's it. It's actually um, immune. Ooh. Excellent. So yeah, Zardarok is not looking great. He is definitely bloodied. Um, is there anything else to talk to you on your turn, Tempest? Spit at him. Excellent. Um, hits him right on the cheek and starts to drip down as we come to Kapanuk's turn. Kapanuk is going to also rush in here. See that guy. And I believe, let's see, that was one, two, three, four, five, six. He has, just to double check, what is a Goliath's motion? 30. Okay, so he has to stop there, but he is... He's ready to go once that guy gets here. Uh, and that's going to bring us to the top of the round with Malai. Okay, so Malai's going to step into this way. I can see through the door, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's line of sight. Uh, he's going to take out 
uh, four ball bearings from his bag, uh, spin them around in his hand. They start to glow, and then he's going to cast magic missile with them. Nice. Uh, so. And he's Zardarok casting that take, on Zardrock? Okay. Yeah. And he's going to take 44 plus four. Excellent. <laughs> Again, 44. What the frick? <laughs> <laughs> Five, six, uh, ten plus four. So he's going to take 14 force damage as the magical bolts hit him. Uh, He's turning to face Tempest as they all hit him in the back and cause him to kind of lose his footing for a second before he catches himself. The chainmail rattling as the crown on his head shakes off kilter. Z. Does he look at me? Um, He hasn't, no. Okay, I'm still going to duck behind this corner like a coward. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he's he's pretty distracted by the barbarian that's flaming in front of him. Um, okay, uh, Z. Um, I'm going to cast uh, Chaos Bolt thrown at Sardarok. That is a 19. That'll hit. Okay. Um, oh, that is 13 damage. That's 13 lightning damage. And because I rolled two fives, it's going to leap. And ooh, it's going to leap to the, uh, the mind flare because I'm not okay. happy. There's a mind flare there. So it takes 13 lightning as well. The oh, mind no. flare does? No, I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay. Um, I have to make an attack roll against it. Uh, does a 12 hit it? A 12 does hit it. Okay. That's going to take 11 thunder damage. The mind flayer shakes as the thunder hits it, and you see its head droop forward. Um, see screams and deep speech, and that's yeah, we're, we're cool. Altus. So Altus isn't gonna move. However, uh. Yeah, the rapier's already out, and I still have Divine Favor up. I'm going to swing with the rapier again. Okay. That's a dirty 20 to hit. Hits. And then 10 plus the Divine Favor. I don't like this dice tonight. Uh, That's 11 piercing damage. Okay, excellent. Um, He is barely standing at this point um, okay uh, it's it it's going to be amazing if he can even manage to make another attack and that'll bring us down to hugo can i use my bonus action to attack again sure <laughs> go ahead <laughs> get the kill that's a 19 to hit hits Whew. If I get my third nat one in a row on a four-sided dice, mind you, I'm going to be upset. Okay, that's uh, 13 more piercing damage. Sardarok falls to the ground, stabbed in the back. Tempest, as you watch the light leave his eyes, the crown falling to the ground as he hits his knees, shattering. You go. Um... I suppose it's time to go again. Um, I will, as my bonus action, have Mordecai teleport uh, me and Tempest again, 15 feet this way. So we're right in front of this guy. Can I be flanking? Or um, no? I think that's 15. I think that's a little too far. Let me see yeah. where he was. Yeah, that's where you're at there is 15. Okay. Um, and then as my action, I'm going to cast um, uh, Summon Fae. <laughs> Is it so going to be another Mirthful one? 
Um, it is going to be mirthful, yes. Um, so there's a mirthful fey, and I'm going to summon it right on the other side of this guy here. Excellent. Can I flank with him there? Is that flanking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. Um, and then that's it for my turn. And then the fa- and then I'll say as a command, um, attack him until he goes down. Uh, and then that ends my turn. And then the phase turn starts right away. So then he's going to make an attack. That is a 21 to hit. Hits. 11 points of damage. Okay, great. And then that is my turn. The Durgar inside the suit screeches as we go from Hugo down to its turn, and it is going to attack you. You who? Right. Hugh, go. Um, that is a 21 and a 10 to hit. Uh, 21 hits. Okay, so its hammer slams down on the ground next to you, barely missing Malachi, Mordecai, as its claw comes through the other side while you're distracted and hits you in the chest uh, for eight bludgeoning damage. All right. And that brings us... I made my con save as well for my spell. Excellent. And that brings us from you down to Tempest. Okay, I'm going to attack twice with my axe. I'm going to go ahead and do it recklessly because I do not have advantage, right? You do not right, right here, there. no. If you want to shove uh, Hugo out of the way and okay. take his spot. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's going to be 22 and 26 to hit. hit. And that's going to be... So, oh, 7 plus t- 17. Uh... I'm sorry. <laughs> That's going to be 19 and regular damage, and then uh, the three damage from my storm aura, which is going to get other people again. So. Uh, that is exactly what you needed, and you see the suit begin to dismantle the limbless body of the Durgar inside of it, spilling out the lights that were actually inside of it, going dim, and you are out of combat. Oh, oh, oh. And as you all stand here over the body of the ruler of Sunblight, that is where we'll end tonight. Thank you guys so much for playing. Uh, thank you all so much for watching on YouTube and on Twitch. We really appreciate you guys coming in. Um, just as a reminder, if you're interested in doing that player versus player battle royale, the link is in the description below. So make sure to sign up by February 10th so we can get all that squared away. It'll be on Roll20 in Zoom. Um, and also, thank you so much to all of our patrons for uh, for supporting us. We really appreciate you guys. Um, Scott, Sparky, David, Daniel, Rio's mom, Alistair, Sean, you guys are all the best. Thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you. And if you haven't already uh, subscribed, we'd super appreciate it. It helps us out a lot. So please uh, like, subscribe. If you have comments, put them below. We'll be having an after party right after this where we'll kind of discuss what happened this episode, any questions they have or kind of clarifications and things like that. Um, but we also are happy to answer questions in the comments or on any of the uh, social media pages or email. Uh, so feel free to reach out. And with that, we will end with our new tagline. Um, May your, and I'm going to butcher it because Rio disappeared for a moment. Um, May your days be filled with friends, fun, and natural 20s. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And with that, good night, everybody. Yes. Yes.